This is Dudley Brown, Executive Vice President of the National Association for Gun Rights, and I'm talking with Kelly McMillan, the owner and director of operations with McMillan Group International. People know your company as the McMillan Stocks. Everybody knows your stocks in the firearms industry and appreciate what you guys do, both for the civilian and military and law enforcement world. So, Well, thanks for giving me this opportunity, Dudley. And, and yes, you are correct. We are, are far uh, more well known for uh, the fact that we've been making fiberglass stocks for almost 40 years. And, and Kelly McMillan's name came into the forefront recently about an incident with Bank of America. And I have been inundated with requests for information on it, whether it's a hoax or not. And uh, I reached out to you about a week ago and, and wanted to give you a chance to talk to, to activists and members within the firearms community through our system and, and let us know what actually happened. Okay, Dudley, thanks for giving me this opportunity. Um, about a week and a half, April 19th, uh, I had a, a standard scheduled uh, account analysis meeting with uh, representatives of ours uh, from Bank of America. Uh, when the, the guys from Bank of America showed up, um, a Mr. Fox, who was a senior vice president, came, uh, and it was obvious right away that he was there to conduct the, the meeting. I, I thought that was extremely odd because I'd never met him before. I didn't really know why he was there. He, he came from an office downtown and did not work in the branch that we deal with. Um, so I was a little suspect as to what his, his plans were. It did not take me long to find out the direction of the meeting. It had absolutely nothing to do with um, our viability as a customer uh, and how our accounts were doing. Every time we had had this uh, meeting in the past 12 years, and it was an annual review, uh, the bank would always ask, what, we, what can we do to help you? How can we make you more successful? What can we uh, provide for you that will we'll make this year better? Exactly what you would, you would expect from your banker. Bank to do. Exactly. Yeah. Well, this conversation started out with Mr. Fox telling me that, well, we've looked at your um, – your accounts and and we we really uh, are a little upset that you used to be more of a parts manufacturing business uh, rather than a firearms manufacturer and now you're you you do more of that and you're making sniper rifles and hunting rifles and you know I could I just had a feeling I knew where this was going so I interrupted him and I said you're going to tell me that you want me to take my business elsewhere because I manufacture firearms. And he said, that's correct. Wow. He says, Bank of America has to assess the risk of doing business with the firearms manufacturer. And I said, assess the risk. You mean this is a political decision? And he said, yes, it is. Now, I didn't mean political, Democrat, Republican, you know, elections coming up and all that. I meant an inter-Bank of America politics, which dictated why this meeting was taking place. Uh, and I think he understood me, and, and his answer was to that effect. I have no idea what, uh, where, what their positions are with national politics or anything, so I'm not commenting well, on that. We all do know, uh, I think most people in America do know that Bank of America has had its hand out, though, during this, this banking crisis. And so, to some degree, the taxpayer has to look at this and say, uh, wait a minute, I'm funding you guys, and now you're ha having this attitude. But nevertheless, go ahead. Well, so I said, well, then there's, there's nothing else to talk about, and uh, he left. Um, and at that point, you know, my head started racing, and I was thinking, and not that I was – concerned about finding a new bank at all because my finances are in terrific shape. It's, it's not going to be difficult. As a matter of fact, since then, I've had about 20 different banks offer to be my bankers. Now, they haven't looked at my financials yet, but once they do, it'll be a, a very easy transition from Bank of America to whoever it is I choose. But in addition to that, I thought, you know, th this is so wild and crazy. I have to let my, my customers and my fans know what happened because I think it's important. And so I posted it on my Facebook page. Yeah, and that probably started it. Um, what's amazing is that a bank which is in trouble, as most banks are, uh, would look at this and look at your business and not see that this is one of the few bright spots in our current economy. 
is the firearms industry is vibrant and alive and well in America, um, thanks to a lack of restrictions, or at least very few, and it's one area in which they should count their blessings, not not question. You would think so. Yeah, you would think so. Um, one of the, the questions that I've been asked most, and I answer it the same way every single time, is why would Bank of America not want your business when it just did a deal worth $250 million with the, Fort, uh, with the Freedom Group and the fact that they, they have other customers that are in the firearms industry? And, yeah. and, and my answer has always been, I have no idea. Um, the only thing I know is what Mr. Fox told me. The decision was because I make firearms, and that it was a political decision. And um, you know that that's all I know. I don't know what Bank of America's policies are, and I, I've never claimed to. Um, but I've been real uh, strict about staying to the facts about the meeting exactly as it happened. Yeah. Did, was there a follow-up from Bank of America? Did anybody else call you and and? tried to tell you, no, we, we weren't doing that, or that was a misunderstanding, or, gee, maybe you didn't quite understand this right? Uh, yes, there was. Uh, a Mr. Benito Almanza, who is the state president uh, of B of A for Arizona, uh, secretary called me and basically demanded that we, we have a meeting. I, I tried to say no a half a dozen times, but um, then then – the good guy in me said, well, I at least ought to give them a chance to, to say their part. Kind of half expecting that they might offer an apology and say, you know, that was totally off the wall and, you know, Mr. Fox had no reason to, to make those comments. And and basically what they said is, you, mis you misunderstood. It was a misunderstanding. Um, that isn't the reason. The reason is, is is that we just decided that we no longer want uh, the risk of of your accounts with us, and we want you to to move somewhere else. But <laughs> the financial risk of your accounts? Y yes. Yeah, <laughs> that in itself didn't make any sense. I've never bounced a check, never missed a payment. I have two lines of credit. Um, I'm at 65% of the maximum allowable on these lines, and um, Business this year, the first quarter of this year, is up 100% in the rifle company and about 15% in the stock company. So business is good. And I know there's no way any bank could look at those financials and say, oh, this is a problem. And when I find a bank, and, and it will be within the next couple of weeks, I'm sure they will say, well, we're glad to have your business, and when that happens, I will make that public, and then you know, Bank of America won't be able to stand behind the excuse that, well, this was a, an interbank decision based on sound banking fundamentals. And, and they claim that it was because you moved into firearms when you have produced accessories there's very little difference in terms of what the public sees between building a stock and building a rifle. But, in fact, you, you become a manufacturer when you make your own actual firearms, correct? Well, that's correct. And my brother and I started McMillan Brothers Rifle Company in 1992. Uh, it was in 2007 that we wanted to give the, the public a better understanding of what we did in the firearms business, so we changed the name from McMillan Brothers Rifle Company to McMillan Firearms Manufacturing, and at the same time, we moved basically the, the banking operation from uh, another bank to Bank of America. So when I opened that account in 2007, the name of the account was McMillan Firearms Manufacturing. So if at that time they weren't really aware of what we did, they weren't paying a lot of attention, and that's why I said the conversation with Mr. Fox showed me that he he didn't know my business. This wasn't something that he was real familiar with, uh, which is why I just assumed that he, he was appointed to come to my office to be the one to tell me that they'd like me to find another bank. I just don't think they had he had any intention of – of answering the questions that I asked because he didn't think I was going to ask them. Yeah, yeah. Well, 
I know what, how I'd respond. I would immediately take my business elsewhere, regardless of what their intention was in the beginning. But I think it's fair to let them try to uh, correct the situation. If there was a misunderstanding, it's pretty clear there wasn't. Sure sounds well, I will tell you, when, I, when Mr. Almanza came to the office, the very first thing I asked him was if he uh, minded if I recorded the meeting. And he said, yes, I do. Huh. And I said, you, you do mind if I record it? I, I heard you right. And he said, yes. And I said, now why is that? And he said, because I just want this to be a nice, friendly conversation between mm. you and I. Mm. And that was his excuse for not wanting it recorded. Now, being a man of honor, and I asked him, and he said, no, I did not record the conversation. I could have recorded it without his knowledge, and it would have been fine. I just, that's not the way I operate, and I, I gave him an opportunity to chime in, and he did, much to my surprise. Now, personally, I, any time I've ever been asked if I minded whether the conversation was recorded, I, I've said, no, I have, I have no problem with that at all. Yep. But I sometimes suspect if somebody doesn't want to be held accountable for what they've said would indicate why they may say, no, I'd rather not have it uh, recorded. Well, I know you wouldn't do this on your own, but I'd like to give you a chance to plug the firearms you sell and, and your accessories here. I mean, you moved into the firearms uh, manufacturing business, and I'd love for you to just tell briefly what – what you're manufacturing, what you're excited about? Well, we're really excited about both of our businesses. The, the firearms manufacturing business actually has been growing each year and because we basically changed our business model from a custom gun builder to a, a manufacturer of a complete line of rifles, which is indicated in the name. It, we've done a really good job with our marketing and advertising to to let people understand that they can look on our Facebook and find something. Uh, for example, our, our EOL line of rifles, which are basically designed for long-range hunting, you can buy a package which includes the scope, uh, the scope cap level, ADI, ammunition, and be able to, to go out in the field and know that all of these components are matched as a set and it will be the most accurate a rifle that you can buy and and will allow you to work and practice and become um, able to make those shots at 800, 900, and 1,000 yards. That's one of the most exciting parts of our hunting rifle line. Now, with our tactical line, which include all of our tactical rifles, TAC-308, TAC-300, TAC-338, um, Chris Kyle is popular now. Some of uh, your readers may have seen his new book out called American Sniper. Well, if, you, if you've if you caught that book or seen a photo of it, the rifle on the, the front cover is a Macmillan TAC 338, which we actually gave to Chris Kyle uh, before he did his last deployment in Afghanistan. Wow. And it was that rifle that he used to shoot uh, the longest confirmed uh, of his career. So our tactical rifles are even for civilians who, hey, I want what our guys that have been fighting over in Iraq, the the, the, the SEALs and the Special Forces guys, I want what they want. Yeah. They have um, the TAC-50 is always the big boomer of of our line, and you people bet. just are mesmerized by what that gun will do. Uh, it was used in a, a shot by a, a Canadian sniper uh, named Rob Furlong, who for um, almost 10 years held the record for the longest confirmed kill at uh, 2,340 meters, so significantly long-range gun. So we're excited about all of the rifles. Kelly, uh, we've held a 50 cal and machine gun shootout in Colorado for many years, and uh, a great number of McMillan 50s uh, were there, and they were always pretty much the top of the competition uh, when we were doing any kind of long-range competition, shooting uh, sticks of dynamite at, you know, 1,000 yards. It was virtually always the McMillans that were the tightest. So I, I don't own one, but uh, certainly excited about what you guys have done and, and the reputation you've built. I know we're going to have some advice to to our members and activists about Bank of America, but we'd like an update when you do choose a bank and if you have any insight to uh, any other national banks who can't basically filled the void and said, no, we want the firearms industry 
within our portfolio. Uh, we believe that's a part of the strength of America. Um, frankly, if they don't see that, I think they're kind of blind. Well, Dudley, I will absolutely let everyone know which bank we pick. You know, there's a little bit of pressure on me now because thousands of people are watching. Um, I, I've got a, a whole list of people who said, let us know uh, where you go, because if we, any way possible that we can, we'll follow you. Uh, so I have to make sure that it's a Second Amendment friendly, not just a Second Amendment tolerant bank, Amen. one that's sound financially, that, that isn't losing money every year. Um, and one that really wants me to be as successful as I possibly can and who supports me and my industry. So when that happens, we'll, we'll post it on our Facebook and on our website. I've kept a, an email list of all of the people who have uh, contacted me that want this information, and we'll get it out to you as soon as that happens. I suspect that it will be within the next two weeks. We'll, we'll plan on a follow-up. Kelly, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Thanks, Dudley. Thanks for having me.